going to go into the presentation um, of the more detailed presentation on the um, IE Nets project now. So I'm going to invite Mike Jones uh, to come down and kick us off on that. There you go, Mike. If you can just use that. Thanks, Barry. Um, thanks very much, uh, Barry, and uh, thanks, uh, Sabine, for the, uh, uh, the overview um, on the topic. Uh, I, I think it's been really um, useful to see what uh, the situation is at a global scale and, and, and you know I think the, the important point that we want to bring out in this project is what we're, we're trying to do is trying to bring this type of analysis down to a national scale and I think as uh, Sabine mentioned earlier you know this is uh, to a large extent what's, what's missing now from the analyses uh, that have been done um, and uh, you know, basically, we want, what we want to do is to see what the, the island of Ireland can contribute, uh, if necessary, to um, uh, net uh, negative emissions uh, uh, of uh, CO2. I come to it as a, as a plant biologist. Um, I suppose a theme of my research uh, for a long time has been photosynthesis. And it's the process of photosynthesis that we're relying on to... Uh, take this CO2 from to the atmosphere and to uh, basically put it into plants, to suck it into plants, and for us to find some way of, of, of trying to store that, uh, or capture that uh, in the long term. Um, and so uh, our natural uh, interest and inclinations would be to, to try to, to look at what options we have uh, for using uh, plant material uh, to um, fix CO2 and to, to utilize that through um, uh, this process of what we call uh, BEX, uh, bioenergy uh, and carbon uh, capture. Um, go on to the uh, next slide. As has been said already, I, I won't uh, spend uh, uh, any more time on this, but basically the background to the project is that uh, we have to do something about um, uh, regulating the concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere. In the longer term, we'll look at looking at basically taking carbon out of the atmosphere and, and, and storing it uh, in the long term. Um, the negative emissions are really, very simply, um, a situation where uh, the carbon is sequestered or stored um, and uh, we have, um, a, uh, have that uh, stored for, for, for the long term. And um, our best example, and, and we've heard uh, quite a lot about this already, of course, is um, uh, carbon uh, uh, becks. But um, what we want to do as part of this project is to look at how uh, this process of becks might be applicable uh, in Ireland. Um, and uh, as we've seen already, what, what's happening is that the, what, what we can do is to, is to grow biomass, um, capture uh, that carbon, uh, and release that carbon again uh, in the production of, uh, of energy. But we want to capture that carbon uh, and store it uh, the long term. The first part of it, of course, is what we're doing already, and we've been doing quite a lot of work over, uh, in, in recent years on looking at uh, potential uh, sources of, um, of biomass production. Uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, the important thing is to fix that carbon as efficiently as possible. And there's been a lot of uh, concern, I think, um, uh, particularly amongst the non-biologists, um, uh, about the relatively low efficiency of photosynthesis. Um, it's what we've got, but it's not very efficient at fixing uh, CO2. And uh, our aim, as I think as biologists, is to um, find ways of maximizing uh, utilization of, of carbon. And, and uh, we can do this by collecting particular crops, managing them in a particular way, um, to uh, maximize the uh, potential uh, for carbon fixation, but also in association with that, 
some, uh, these crops can also store some carbon in the soil. A lot of the, uh, the, the crop goes below ground, um, and that can increase the carbon content of the soil, uh, soil and so over the long term, make a contribution to storing CO, uh, uh, carbon. And in fact, in some situations, biomass crops are a negative carbon emission, show negative carbon emissions already. Um, so, uh, the interest in, it is really trying to apply that to Ireland, bearing in mind that there are real issues about the use of land, um, the competition for uh, the use of that land for, for growing food, uh, impacts on biodiversity, um, and um, uh, the uh, competition, of course, will depend upon the value that we can put on these, uh, on, on these products. At the moment, we don't get enough money, farmers don't get enough money uh, to uh, really stimulate the production of biomass. Uh, when it comes to the carbon uh, CO2 capture, then of course uh, there are major issues um, in terms of, of uh, exactly uh, where we would store that carbon uh, uh, at, a, at a national scale. And this is something that, we, that I think we have to make some, um, uh, need to analyze and, and maybe make some uh, uh, suggestions in the future. In addition to the BECs, there are, um, broadly speaking, uh, we think um, other uh, possibilities, uh, afforestation, uh, maybe we can link that with BECs as well. I mean, you know, burning wood and, and capturing that carbon is, is also uh, a way of, um, of uh, potentially achieving negative carbon emissions. But, um, the issue of uh, soil carbon storage, uh, for instance, there's been um, uh, some discussion about the way in which grasslands, and of course a lot of our land area is covered with grass, the way in which grasslands can accumulate a, a carbon. Um, and there's quite a lot of evidence that you can manage those grasslands to maximize that or increase that, that storage of carbon. Uh, we're already involved in a, a project collaboration with um, uh, workers in New Zealand who are um, carrying out deep ploughing of, of uh, grasslands to bury the carbon near the surface of the soil and bury it in the long term, or proposing to do that. So there are ways of storing carbon in the soil, and all, as was mentioned by Sabine as well, biochar, um, basically burning the, the, the vegetation uh, converting it into um, a form of, of carbon which um, will uh, improve the soil but also uh, will store carbon in the soil for the long, long term. And then the other one, not related to, uh, to BEX or plant uh, photosynthesis, is the direct air capture, which has already been mentioned. So um, those, are one, those are areas that I sort of brought areas where I think we'll be, we'll be focusing in our analysis. But um, as far as the, the project is concerned, uh, we're breaking this down into uh, these five work packages. Um, and uh, initially, uh, we have a, a review of the, of the global literature, uh, but then uh, looking at what we have available on island, there's very little so far but we need to um, uh, identify what that literature is. Um, in the second work package, we're going to uh, model bioenergy resource potential in Ireland um, as one of the uh, work packages. Um, and then the third work package is a life cycle assessment uh, of that bioenergy production in Ireland. Um, and work package four is modeling of uh, the, the um, Ne uh, negative uh, carbon emissions um, for potential uh, decarbonation uh, pathways. And Book Package 5 is the uh, project management. Um, I th now I think we'd like to go on to look at um, what, in a little bit more detail of what's going on in these work packages. So Owen is going to start with that.
Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through the first three work packages we're going to do. What we've started already is the literature review. Um, it's a massively growing research field and it's growing more rapidly each year. Uh, recent estimates are uh, publications being released at a rate of about peer-reviewed papers per year. So in nine months we're not going to cover all of that. Um, we will very much be taking the focus on research relevant to deploying negative emission technologies in a small developed nation like Ireland. And the output of this work will be a technical report that gives a broad general overview of the global perspective and then a much more specific view of the research to date in Ireland and research relevant to using this technology in a small nation's context. Um, from this technical report we will also produce an accompanying summary for policymakers and a peer-reviewed journal article. The second work package, which Mike and I will be mostly focusing on here in the botany department, is work package two, bioenergy resource potential in Ireland. And the aim of this uh, work package is to estimate the yields of bioenergy crops such as uh, metastasis or willow in short rotation forestry for different locations in Ireland. The output of this work will produce a productivity that considers the maximum potential yields of these crops over the next 50 years, taking into account possible effects of climate change and also considering their carbon dynamics and sequestration potential, and then being able to compare these yields to the outputs from more conventional forestry. And from this, we hope to be able to provide some guidelines for optimal land use in Ireland to meet uh, energy demand. Um, building on work package two then from month 13 to 24 we'll move on to work package three which is a life cycle assessment of bioenergy potential. So this life cycle assessment will consider all of the components that produce or um, uh, take in greenhouse gases in the production of bioenergy crops up until the farm gate and then we will also perform a techno-economic analysis to take into account the different technical and cost impacts of bioenergy production systems in Ireland. The output of this will be an assessment of the, a detailed assessment of the greenhouse gas impacts of growing energy crops in Ireland and also an analysis of the cost and technical consequences of achieving negative emissions uh, in biofuel production. So that's most of the work that will be focused in the botany department here. I'm now going to hand over to Paul who's going to tell us about what DCU will be up to. Thank you. So in work package four we're looking at uh, energy decarbonisation pathways in Ireland so that's really with the aim of modelling the role of um, how we are going to decarbonise um, emissions and there's obviously various different scenarios to be explored in doing that. So far there has been um, exploration of least cost scenarios and there's more work going on at the University of Cork about that. And so what we are hoping to look at really is what's the carbon budget for Ireland because there's a remaining global carbon budget for, as, as Frank was mentioning, um, for well below two degrees. And so how we meet that budget, how we meet our share of that budget, our fair share of that budget is, is what we're going to be looking at. And the, our output is, is really about producing various alternative scenarios that could, could go into meeting that, that, um, that, res, that kind of um, getting towards zero emissions from the energy system in Ireland which is, is what has to be achieved. And just to give an indication of, of where we are compared to, um, here's a study from uh, just three, three, from 2012, so five years ago, indicating for Ireland um, where, where things w w would go on a, a kind of feasible pathway to this 80% um, reduction relative to 1990, um, and superimposed on that the recent um, EPA uh, Projections and obviously these projections involve all sorts of assumptions, economic and and so forth. But nonetheless, we can see there's a big gap and particularly a cumulative gap because that's what counts as cumulative emissions. So this gap is really the area of that triangle. That gap is, is actually what we're um, having to look at. Is as Barry was talking about, does that tacitly assume a large amount of negative emissions for Ireland? Maybe developed later, but probably being developed starting starting very quickly. So, uh, so this is what we're looking at: is there is potentially this is very large diversion between what we were talking about following and and where we might be going right now. So that's so that's a big gap to be addressed, and that's what we hope to address in work package four. 
And I think I'll hand over to Barry. Paul, so I'm just going to, just on, on the project management and, and outputs and communication, I'll just summarise what's involved in that. So uh, you've seen we're, we're doing a literature review, uh, global literature, specifically on NETS, Irish literature on component parts of NETS. So although there isn't specific Irish literature on NETS, there's lots of work that has been done on bioenergy, lots of work has been done on carbon capture and storage. Um, on the energy system pathways. So we'll be drawing on all of that in our literature review. The uh, outputs that Alwyn mentioned, the productivity map, PRG and SRC, and also compared with forestry, and the, the, the conventional uh, farming systems that we have in Ireland at the moment. And an intriguing question there is to what extent can we get, as it were, a, a, a double bounty, so if, if you uh, take um, some of the existing ruminant-based farm activity, uh, and ruminants of course uh, are very greenhouse gas intensive, ruminants, cattle, uh, sheep, um, goats, deer, uh, if, if some of that is shifted into bioenergy production then you reduce or eliminate production of non-CO2 gases, uh, methane, nitrous oxide, uh, and, and potentially uh, by producing bioenergy crops, if that can be incorporated into a BEX type, type system, you actually pull out carbon dioxide of the atmosphere as well, um, which sounds lovely and it would be great uh, if it didn't cost anything and you know you, you weren't constrained by the existing land use and the existing economic structures and all those other things. But uh, we, we want to look at, uh, have a first look at what the possibilities uh, are there. And the life cycle analysis that Alwyn mentioned, we'll have a report on that. Uh, and uh, as Paul said, the detailed technical scenarios on deep decarbonisation of the energy system. And just to emphasise, that's the whole energy system. And again, you get some intriguing kind of questions here. So for example, we have a finite indigenous bioenergy resource, no matter what way you cut it. Even if we decide tomorrow we're, we're going to focus all our agricultural production on bioenergy, it's still finite. We can only do so much and it wouldn't actually cover our current total energy consumption. Um, but more importantly, within our energy consumption, you've got electricity, you've got heating, you've got transport. Those are the big pieces. Okay. Electricity, if you use bioenergy and electricity, that's large centralized power plants where it's feasible to do carbon capture and storage. So you can, uh, whatever part of your bioenergy resource is allocated to that, then that can go into a negative emissions type uh, scenario. If you allocate to transport, combustion engines like uh, biogas uh, in, in trucks or something like that, that's small distributed mobile combustion. You cannot do capture and storage feasibly in that case. So there's decisions to be made there about the allocation of our, heat, of, of our bioenergy resource. Heating is the other big component. Again, if you're talking about large central heating plants, um, big industrial users, or maybe um, district heating type systems, uh, then maybe they'll be big enough that you could do carbon capture and storage on them. But for conventional domestic heating, uh, it's not going to be the way we do with uh, gas at the moment, um, or oil for that matter. It's not feasible to do carbon capture and storage on, the, on that scale. So again, you have to think carefully about where you want to allocate um, your bioenergy resource. And without prejudicing the conclusions the project might come to, uh, it would certainly, uh, that, that kind of preliminary orientation would suggest that you have to look very hard at electrification of transport and heating rather than allocating bioenergy resource directly to use in transport and heating. But as I say, we have to look at it in a lot more detail than that. Uh, we have a dissemination plan, so that's all the, the technical reports, journal uh, articles, presentations at conferences and so forth. We do have a website, we'll show you the, the link in a second. Uh, there's some blog posts up there already. We have a Twitter account, so do please follow us and keep track uh, of the project and interact with us as we go along. Um, all the resources that we produce, the recording of this morning's event, all that kind of thing, uh, will all be accessible through the web website, the reports and so forth, as well as being on our website, will also be in the EPA repository um, of project outputs. Um, so, uh, you know, we've 
launch event today, our Twitter account, uh, the website, just a quick screenshot of those. We have already, even though we're only at the preliminary literature review stage in the project, we, we've tried to do what um, you know, the, is written into the project proposal, which is to provide policy relevant uh, information. So two national, recent national consultations, one on the renewable heat incentive scheme and the second on the draft national mitigation plan. Uh, we did put in formal submissions to both of those uh, in, in relation to the role of negative emissions or the significance of negative emissions for those consultations. And again, you'll find those on the website if you're interested in them. So that's the website, that's the Twitter account. Um, we, we welcome your engagement. Uh, we'll obviously be promoting the outputs through the blog and the website, through the Twitter account. So if you want to keep up to date, that's uh, the place to watch. So with that, uh, we have about 15, 20 minutes left. We're definitely finishing by half past. We have a light lunch uh, downstairs for those of you who are able to stay with us and, and we can have informal networking at that stage. But we wanted to leave this time for any collective engagement or discussion, if anybody wants to ask us questions, um, or Sabina, uh, if, if you want to unmute your microphone. Oh, well, Frank's going to come in immediately. So Sabina, if you want to, um, but I, I'm, I'm going to switch this over again uh, to let the, um... okay, sorry, fire away there, Frank, please. So, sorry, Barry, I, I didn't want to come in immediately, but I, I have to go right now, so I just wanted to say a few things. Thanks very much for the presentation. Um, glad to see this project is up and running. Uh, just a few points. There is an awful lot of work already done in this area. Bioenergy has been explored for a long time, so it'll be very important to, to build on what's already out there rather than reworking any of those things. We've also done work in carbon capture and storage. We have projects there, which presumably you're aware of. Uh, I would like that, you know, it, bioenergy backs would be really important, but I would like to see horizon scanning as well, to look at Mike, for instance, Mike mentioned the fact that photosynthesis is not very efficient in certain cases, and there are new developments in different ways to capture carbon uh, in the at from the atmosphere. So I, I would hope that you would be looking to the future as well as uh, existing technology, so I presume that is part of your, I haven't read your proposal in detail, but I see Paul nodding there, so I presume you will be doing all of that now. I, I, I look forward to getting that information of when it is provided, and obviously this, this will be a snapshot. Uh, I'm delighted you're working with the group in Cork that you can use their activities as well and see how they can be uh, uh, added to in terms of um, their energy modeling can be added to in terms of using negative emissions. Thanks very much, Frank. Yes, absolutely. Um, those are all very highly relevant points and, and we absolutely uh, are dedicated to not duplicating anything that anybody else is doing. Um, so we'll be trying very hard not, not uh, to do anything like that. Um, so anyway, the, the floor is open. Um, yes, here, Alvin. Sabina, feel free to intervene at, at any stage. Yes, yes, after that one, I'll, I'll say something. Hi, uh, Jim Shear from the uh, Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. Uh, we're Ireland's uh, energy agency. Uh, thanks very much for the introduction to the, to the project. Uh, it's clearly very welcome. And uh, I guess what I got from today is that we need to start now. That's pretty clear. Uh, and I'm interested uh, to hear maybe from Sabina about the kinds of policies, which I know is one of your focuses, that policymakers can start to consider now at the early stage. Um, obviously, we have some big challenges in Ireland with our energy targets, and the latest forecasts bear those out. And Paul had a couple of uh, trends um, there that were relevant um, in that context, and we'll certainly support Paul on Work Package 4 with data and, and wherever we can. Uh, so we look forward to being in touch with you on that. But, I guess uh, I'm interested in, in this approach. In Ireland, we obviously have to focus on the issue and what's possible here uh, in, in the technology sense. Uh, I wonder how much you've thought about or if there's room for thinking about enterprise policy in this context. So uh, we do a lot of work um, that is readily exportable. Uh, and we have agencies like Enterprise Ireland and the IDA supporting companies in Ireland 
making findings uh, to bring those uh, to the world and for, and for companies to, to benefit from that. So uh, I think that's going to be a key, key area where we can impact globally uh, from Ireland. So just wondering if there's been much thought on what, what enterprise policy uh, could do uh, to support uh, NETS at this early stage. Okay, Sabina, I hope you heard that. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, if you want to comment from a, from a global or European point of view, and I'll say something about the Irish situation. Exactly. So, basically, what I uh, wanted to say to the last comment uh, about policies is that I think this was something that will naturally come forth from the, um, from, from the project as well. And that relates also a little bit to one of the comments that Frank had about scanning the horizon and looking for, for, for other opportunities um, than, than BACs, because I believe that each country is, is quite specific in what type of negative emissions potential um, will be coming forth from it. And uh, in Ireland, for instance, I could imagine that there's also synergies uh, with with agricultural policy and maybe other options uh, in the agricultural area than biomass. So I think that's that's something to to keep in mind. I also think um, I want to reiterate something that I already said in the in the presentation, namely that um, these national studies is really something that's that's missing. From, um, from from the point of literature, but also from a, from a policy point of view, because what you actually see in the global scenarios is basically what comes out of a cost optimization. And then in the best case, of course, you have um, some linkage with land use models and so on that tell you something about suitability and potentials and so on. But really knowing what's feasible within um, a country within its institutional framework, within the realms of its policies and so on, that's, that's something that's, that's really lacking and um, so we, we need a lot more um, of, these, of these projects and so that's actually why I, why I really like the, um, the IE project uh, for Ireland. And then um, also something else that Frank was saying on the on the literature. So we've actually been um, looking into um, the literature and basically the explosion of literature that we're seeing. And so I can only um, underline what your what your colleague said before uh, that that we're looking at a very high rate of publications here as well. And what we've been trying at my institute is to also use bibliometric. Um, tools in order to sort of keep track of the whole field and the whole landscape and I, I would be very happy to exchange on that and, and, and maybe that's helpful for you also to, to spot what could be particularly interesting for, for Ireland. So yeah, let's, let's connect back about this bilaterally afterwards. Thanks, Sabina. I, I, Jim, you're absolutely right. Um, effective action in negative emissions technologies, in mitigation generally, in transformation of the energy system, in agriculture. Uh, there are many disparate stakeholders, but enterprises of uh, big and small uh, are certainly key players in that. Um, but speaking as an engineer um, and having worked in industry, uh, industry and enterprises rely on public policy setting the frameworks that actually make it feasible you know businesses have to be you know they they have to have a business model uh, that is financially sustainable so the, the, there is a, a role a clear role um, for government policy in creating the business environment that that allows the desired things to become feasible. Um, the ETS reform, the carbon price issue, uh, the possibility in Ireland's case, particularly if we want to be ahead of this curve rather than behind, if we want to be a climate leader, we can uh, consider um, even pushing ahead of the uh, ETS framework and having a floor price on carbon nationally. The, 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 you know, there are many issues associated with that, but uh, that is certainly an issue. Um, but we could also look at, uh, in the same way as the, the RHI incentive, for example, w w and, and we've had previous schemes for supporting uh, renewable, you know, wind energy deployment or whatever. So nets uh, are the stepping stone towards certainly BECs and direct air capture with storage 
the common denominator to both of those is carbon capture and storage, uh, and storage, and storage, and storage, and storage. Uh, so <clears throat> that costs money. Uh, the, the immediately plausible opportunity is the conceal gas field, which is exhausted. Um, but there, there's a real possibility that it'll simply be shut down without uh, adequate provision for the possibility for future reuse for storage. So at the very least, uh, intervention to uh, keep that uh, facility open, but more importantly, to do the work, and it is expensive work, but the, the geological work to characterize that storage facility. And then at an early stage, uh, think about, um, you know, as part of the capital program, supporting the development of a, a national CO2 storage facility service uh, that would be available to enterprises, uh, obviously energy enterprise, but things like cement production also uh, have, have an independent requirement. Um, but no energy, pro no electricity provider is going to install carbon capture unless they have somewhere for the carbon dioxide to go. So having that storage facility available one way or another is an essential thing. But these are just examples and, as I said, we're just the start of the project. So hopefully by the end, we'll be able to give a much clearer picture, um, but absolutely enterprise engagement with this uh, is going to be essential to deliver significant scale up uh, of any sort. I'll run at the front and then I'll take you on screen. Um, my question is around understanding what's in scope when considering negative emissions technology. Example, say if I take a waste stream, food waste, agri waste, or whatever, and my intervention, first of all, it's not technological intervention, it's financial or economic. And I put that waste stream to an AD plant or a gas uh, process plant or whatever. Therefore, I keep some carbon in the ground. Is that in scope as a negative emissions technology? Well, uh, it's, a, it's not no. a technology. Okay. My intervention is not in scope, even though I have uh, it, it, affected it, negative emissions. I, I, no, but you see, you haven't. That's your problem. Uh, if you just I? go to an anaerobic digester and produce biogas, and biogas is burned, CO2 goes into the atmosphere. Yeah. Unless it's tied with capture and storage, or you know, if you're going to combust it, you have to do capture and storage. Okay, but I've kept some fossil fuel in the ground, so I've kept some sequestered carbon that's already sequestered by nature, and I've left, I've affected it. No? Well, not if you've turned it into bioenergy and combusted it, then no, you haven't. Uh, well, if I keep a chunk of coal in the ground, I have. Yes. Okay. And and, and this is a real question, uh, and it, it comes back to business models for negative emissions. Uh, part of that presumably has to involve people getting paid for capturing and storing CO2, okay? That implies that people who already have carbon stores, mm -hmm. fossil fuel resources, uh, or standing forests, mm -hmm. uh, are they not entitled to be paid for keeping that in storage? You know, if we're gonna pay somebody to keep CO2 in storage in the concealed gas field, why equally uh, are those other stocks of terrestrial carbon, should they not be paid for? And, and it, it's, it's, there, there aren't easy answers to that. Um, but yeah, uh, but, so there are two slightly different things there. There's drawing down additional carbon, uh, how, what the business models for uh, supporting that would be, but then the long-term storage, what the business models for keeping it, once you've got it, keeping it in terrestrial stocks. And, and those aren't quite exactly the same thing, and they probably have to be incentivized and supported separately uh, to achieve long-term storage. But in, in principle, it's, you hear me? Yeah. So in principle, it's avoiding emissions, right? So you would benefit because you, you're not text or or you don't have to buy a permit for it so that's your reward but you don't take additional co2 out of the atmosphere so you don't get an income we could debate this for a long time but isn't it the case that uh, 
overall our problem is this carbon going around throughout the cycle in the atmosphere. And the general problem is that because we take sequestered carbon out of, out of the ground, which is now stored as fossil fuel, we upset the balance. So if we didn't do exactly. that, there would be a constant balance, carbon cycling around, no problems whatsoever. So by my kind of financial economic intervention, I keep some more carbon in the ground. So essentially it is a negative uh, no. Okay, we, we probably have to, yes. I might be splitting but, hairs a little bit, but. Sorry. But in principle, we have to do both. We have to keep the stuff on the ground and then in addition take some, car some CO2 out of the atmosphere. Okay, uh, we, we, we can talk more uh, over our interesting vegetarian lunch There's significance there. Um, John Sweeney. <clears throat> yeah, we've emphasized the, the positive feedback effect of sequestration today throughout. But, uh, of course, uh, vegetation and especially forest cover um, also has implications for uh, emissions from forests in terms of additional VOCs, terpenes, and so on, uh, aeros inducing aerosol formation and ozone. Will those negative, <coughs> negative aspects, negative feedback aspects, also be considered in the context of the viability of, of Beck? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they, they're, they're deep waters, John, um, and, and again, I emphasize this is a small project within the scope of the project. We're not talking about developing new technologies in, in any substantive way. We'll do horizon scanning, we'll look at what the literature tells us the state of the art is. Uh, we certainly will try to see what the current understanding of those, as it were, second order effects. Uh, so in terms of doing life cycle analysis, ideally, um, we'll try to take account of those. Uh, but the first job is to get the first order effects and see whether we've got net negative CO2 on a, on a first order analysis. Because if you haven't got that, first of all, at substantial levels, um, then the, the, the more refined questions you're pointing at don't really come into play, I don't think. <coughs> We have time for just a couple more. Thanks, just to, just to follow up on John's point there, I think when you do the literature scan and you're doing the literature search in the horizon scanning, you will see things like um, the impacts of afforestation on scavenging reactive nitrogen from the atmosphere and increasing nitrous oxide emissions. A lot of that in Ireland has been published, so you should be able to find that. My actual question, though, was more a technical question for the project. So when you're doing the LCA and the, you're doing the assessment of the bioenergy, are you doing kind of full plot scale conversion to bioenergy, or are you looking at other options such as integrated agroforestry, for example? Thanks for that, Matt. Um, our, our aim is to do a, uh, a uh, as inclusive as possible LCA. And, and I think, you know, the important thing about doing these uh, LCAs is to um, decide very clearly what your boundaries are for doing it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of issues around this. And I think, you know, the point that John makes is very important that, you know, when you do uh, an LCA, uh, you've got to um, uh, include as far as possible, as I say, in setting the boundaries, um, uh, uh, a number of these issues, which are maybe maybe secondary, they may, they may be feedback issues, but but they are they are issues that need to be taken into account in order to do this properly. And I think uh, you know the progress in, in this has has been made uh, over time, but it's caused uh, quite a lot of difficulties in the past when these LCAs have been too restrictive in in, in what they covered. Uh, so I, you know we've got to be careful to in, to in, Include as, as whatever we can on a scientific basis. We we understand is happening in these systems. Just to follow up on that, just a recommendation for the the conversion to bioenergy using something like the, for, the UK Forestry Commission um, Woodland CO2 Code, which actually gives you a you know kind of baseline model that allows you to look at soil type, planting density, the impacts of that land use change on soil-based emissions would be really useful in that LCA to actually, actually you know, compartmentalize and categorize the emissions associated with it. Sorry. 
Thanks, Barry. Um, I'm just wondering, will your project paint a picture of Ireland? What will it look like if it does ever get to net negative emissions? And I'm thinking of the likes, the only country I know of is, say, Boot, small economy, 70% forest cover. And I'm also thinking David McKay, who did quite a good sustainability with the hot air. He mapped out Britain with renewable energies. It gave people a picture of what it could potentially look like. I think that would be very useful for policy makers and things like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly aspire to do a certain amount of that. I don't, I, you know, you'll understand that uh, within the limited resources of the project, uh, we can only go so far, but it, it is a quantitative project. So we want to look at, again, do numbers add up or how might numbers add up for Ireland and what would it involve and you know there are all kinds of ways of slicing and dicing this I, I mentioned the the carbon storage facility idea and an alternative is to consider sending CO2 somewhere else to be stored by somebody else and and how does that work and what's the business model for it at the moment the only business model uh, there is a business model for it uh, you can sell CO2 for enhanced oil recovery um, but if you think about what that means, uh, yeah, um, that probably isn't exactly the route forward we want to take. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that. Okay, I said that was the last one, but I'll, I'll, there was a few people with their hands up. Take one last comment from, from there. Hi, uh, sorry, I just had a quick question about the um, non-carbon greenhouse gases. Uh, you mentioned the ruminants, you mentioned uh, methane, and you mentioned uh, in your projections about reducing the, the national herd. Well, the, the latest uh, plan is to, to double the size of the national herd. Is there any aspect of methane sequestration or use or, or anything that plays into the project? Okay, um, uh, as far as there is a little bit of so terminologically, we distinguish between negative emissions technology and carbon dioxide removal, CDR. So nets and CDR. Nets, in theory, are more Catholic. They uh, accommodate any technology that were, would remove any uh, greenhouse gas or other uh, warming pollutant from the atmosphere. Um, CDR is focusing specifically on carbon dioxide. In practice, almost all the work in NETS is CDR. It's focused on carbon dioxide. The, the ideas for removing other pollutants are very, very preliminary um, and, and not, not terribly, at the moment, the ideas that are out there don't look, uh, such as they are, don't look terribly attractive. So our project uh, will be, in, in terms of negative emissions technology per se will be focused uh, essentially on CO2, okay? But that said, when you talk about BECs, because there's a potential land use change from other uses, and some of those other uses are currently giving rise to non-CO2 pollutants, so although we're not going to be looking at trying to take methane or nitrous oxide out of the atmosphere, um, and, and well, methane at least is relatively short-lived. So, um, you know, if, if we could get the emissions level down, w w methane emissions don't have to go to zero. They should, we need to get them down, but they don't have to go to zero. Carbon dioxide emissions have to go to zero. In fact, they have to go to negative because of the long lifetime in the atmosphere. Uh, nitrous oxide is sort of in the middle. Um, so it's, it's complicated, um, but all, all I was suggesting was that there may be, as it were, a co-benefit by focusing on bioenergy in particular for uh, net negative CO2, there might be a co-benefit, uh, depending how you do it, in reduction of other uh, emissions of other greenhouse gases. But, you know, that's kind of me speculating uh, on the hoof, if you forgive the pun. Look, um, we, we are out of time. Uh, I want to thank you all very much for taking the time uh, to be with us this morning. Do please follow up with us. Um, Sabine, if you're still there, I just want to give you an opportunity for one last word. I, I just wanted to thank you again, and, and next time I hope I can be there in person and meet you all. Okay, <laughs> I'm looking very much forward to the project. Sorry? Uh, the, well, if, if you want to get in touch, um, just go to our last slide again. 
So uh, if you go to the website, you'll be able to contact us through the website, um, or you can follow up with me uh, over the lunch, and we'll swap email address and all that kind of thing. Thank you very much. That's it.